God's word for our meditation, as I mentioned earlier, comes from our reading from the book of Acts. I'll reread another verse for us. Then Peter began to speak, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. This is God's word. Our world, I think you can agree, is full of divisions between people. Sometimes those divisions can be as simple as rivalry between teams. You see a person wearing a purple and yellow or blue and orange jersey, what do you think? Probably not, oh, that's a pretty nice guy. I'm sure it's more of a look of disdain or disgust. Often done out of jest. I'm sure if you see the color Honolulu blue and silver today, you're not going to be saying, oh, I hope they do well in the game this afternoon. We have divisions between people, and sometimes it gets even more extreme than that. We have divisions between political parties. The question, are you a Democrat or Republican, is a very hot topic in the media and in the news today. We see divisions between people who live in cities based on where in the city they live. If you live on the east side or the west side, and, and groups build according to that. There are divisions between countries. We have borders between countries. Sometimes those borders are made off of race or ethnicity. And we build up these walls around us. We have divisions because sometimes we think, well, they don't look like me. They don't talk the way I talk. They don't have the same ideology as I do. They don't have the same faith as I do. And we have these walls that build divisions between people. And even after Jesus told and showed his disciples that this gospel message is not just for you, it's for the world, it took a while for the apostles to really get that through their heads, that when Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't just for them. His sacrifice was for the world. Jesus is their savior too. Earlier in the book of Acts, in this same chapter, Luke records for us a vision that Peter received from God. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on a roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. For Peter, this was a mind-blowing moment. So you mean to tell me that now, after all these years, I can eat anything I want? And to dig even deeper into that meaning, you mean I can spend time with the Gentiles and have fellowship with them? We never used to be able to do that. And you can see the hesitation he has about this. Surely not, Lord. This vision was given to him three times. Now whether or not three was God's favorite number and he used it because of that or because it took three times to get this message through Peter's thick skull... God was using it to break down the barrier in Peter's heart and in his mind about who this message of the gospel was for. Because Peter's whole life, leading back generations into ancient Israel, they had strict dietary laws that they had to keep. If we read Leviticus chapter 11, it's all listed there. They weren't allowed to go and be with other sinful, sinful Gentile nations. It was the way in which they showed their faithfulness to God. It set them apart from the other nations of the world. But now that all changed. Because Jesus fulfilled all of those Old Testament laws, they weren't required anymore. And this vision came to Peter at just the right time because it helped him come to the realization that we see in our reading today. And as Peter is receiving his vision from God, someone else is also receiving a vision from God, but it's not a Jew. It was a Gentile believer. 
Uh, Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian regiment of the Roman government, also received a revelation from God. And Peter received news that this happened, and for Peter, this was mind-blowing. It was one thing for a God-fearing Jew, especially an apostle, to receive a vision from God, because they were doing the Lord's work. But a Gentile received a vision from God? In Peter's mind, is this from God or is this from somebody else? What is God setting up here? And we already see God breaking down those barriers in Peter's heart in a good way. When those messengers came from Cornelius to Peter, Gentile messengers, Peter invited them into his home. Something that wasn't done before between Jews and Gentiles. But God was pushing boundaries. The old way of things is over. This is how the church is going to be from now on. And so Peter goes and he arrives at the house of Cornelius and he begins to understand to an even greater extent that God is pushing boundaries. God sent an angel to convince Cornelius that the message of Jesus was true And that everything Peter was going to tell him was the true message that the Savior was also for him. And Cornelius and everyone in his house believed. And the most mind-blowing part of it all is the Holy Spirit did all of that work in Cornelius' heart. Something that Peter never thought was possible before. And God placed Peter in the most well-set-up home run of an evangelism situation. And it all culminated in this moment. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Now the scriptures opened up in a whole new way for Peter. The message that had been, for the most part, kept in the nation of Israel is now for the world. Jews and Gentiles alike can join in fellowship with one another, worship and praise God for all the good things he has done. God chose now to be the time when boundaries were being pushed, walls were being broken down because the gospel message wasn't just for one people, it's for the world. And then Peter made clear to Cornelius the most touching thing of all. You know Jesus... The one who was baptized in the Jordan River by John, who got the stamp of approval by God the Father when the Holy Spirit touched down on him. He's not just the Savior of the Jews. He's your Savior too. God doesn't show favoritism. Jesus died on the cross not just to save the Jews, but to save the world. It is finished applies to the sins of everyone. For the Gentiles, this was mind-blowing. Jesus is my Savior too. For the Jews, this was pushing boundaries. Jesus is their Savior too. Even today, as Gentile believers, we are pushing boundaries with the gospel. Not so much from the standpoint that we are one ethnic nation holding the promise of the Savior and giving it to the world, but... We are pushing boundaries for other people to believe in that gospel message that may not think they are worthy because of X, Y, and Z. For some people who have fallen away from Jesus, the guilt of coming back may be too much to overcome. They might think that their sin is too much or their guilt is too heavy and they can't show their face in church again because what will people think? What will people say? What will Jesus say? And they can put their own barriers up, but Jesus is their Savior too. And even for us, it can be easy to put our own barriers up in the way of spreading the message of the gospel. Well, I can't share the message with them. Do you see who they hang around with? Do you see how they act? Do you see how they talk? Do you see how they dress? Do you see where they live? What if, what if they ruin the good things we have going on here in our family of believers? But the truth is, Jesus is their Savior too. It's so easy to start building barriers when all God wants to do with that gospel message is to break those barriers down because his message is for all. And while we sometimes may be guilty of showing favoritism, God does not 
show favoritism. And it's a good thing he doesn't because would he find favor in you? I know when I look at myself and my sin, there's nothing in me that is favorable, that God would look upon me and say, yeah, I find favor in you. The only person God found perfect favor on it was his son. That's what he said in our gospel message. With you, I am well pleased. And that favor is spread to the world because of Jesus' death on the cross for us. We should be asking ourselves every day, Jesus is my savior too? Because that's how mind-blowing it is that God broke down those barriers of sin in our hearts to give us that message of the gospel. Because we know that we're sinners. We know that we do what is detestable in the eyes of the Almighty God. But God found favor on the one he spoke about that was going to break down barriers with his gospel message that his sacrifice was for the world. That God does not show favoritism he does not treat us as our sins deserve because of Jesus. Our sins have been atoned for. Our salvation is secure. Eternal peace is ours. And that was given to us at our baptisms when the Holy Spirit broke down that sinful, calloused heart of ours and made it a heart that was for God. This message of Jesus goes beyond earthly barriers because Jesus' sacrifice was given for the world. The message we should cherish every day and the message that we proclaim to the world is Jesus is my Savior too. Amen. Please stand.